Okay, hi, we're going to be doing the third in our series of videos on selection or if statements in Java for EECS 1021. All right, so today we're going to be taking a look at one versus multiple if statements and why and how we use those. All right, so uh, the Java 8 fund Fundamentals book, chapter 4 and chapter 5 are great references for this. And uh, we'll be uh, looking at the scanner class as well. It's just one of the things that we use in the, the work that we do. If you want to find out more about the scanner class, then you can take a look at this link right here. All right, so here we go. We're going to look at a, a typical kind of really easy conceptually, but important implement from an implementation perspective example. We're going to prompt the user for the radius value of a circle. We're going to print an error message if the input number is negative. So if the radius is negative, which it shouldn't be, otherwise print the calculated area. That's what we want to do. That's the objective for this program. So we have a Java file called uh, computeArea.java and uh, the the class for it is called computeArea. It's right here. All right. So this is a public class and it starts with this curly brace right here. Inside of the class, there is the, uh, the main right here. Okay. This is the main method. And, um, and so it begins, you can see here, it begins with this curly brace right here. This main method right here begins with a, uh, a print statement to the screen for the user to see. And it says, enter a radius value. And so at this stage, the expectation is that the, the user will type in a positive number to, uh, to do the calculation that, or the, for the program to run the calculation on. So we have a scanner object called input that's created and it's uh, initialized using a sort of a, a default uh, input uh, object from within the, the scanner library. And, uh, and so what you see here is that uh, we then uh, are going to use that object input right here, and we're going to use the next double um, uh, method that's uh, defined for it to determine from the user what the radius is, okay? And so we're gonna have a variable called radius of type double floating point and or double precision floating point and we're going to uh, then also have a constant called pi right here and we're going to to use those to figure out the area but before we do that we're going to ask a question so we've, we've asked the information from the user now we're going to take a look at whether or not that information was good so we ask a question using an if statement right here so the if statement asks is the radius that was provided by the user, is it less than zero? So we're, we're wanting to find out if they've given us a negative number. A negative number is bad. So if they have, we want to print to the screen error a negative radius value. Okay, we want to say that this was a bad thing. You shouldn't do that. And because users might have done it by accident, they might not have known. Uh, they might not understand that radius should be always positive or zero. Um, so we want to give them some feedback. All right, so if the radius is less than zero, print out the error message. Otherwise, okay, so this is like saying otherwise. So in the, the event that it wasn't less than zero, otherwise, or as we say in Java or these other programming languages, else. So this was, if it was found, if this part was found to be false, we're implying that everything else is not less than zero or that it is a the radius value that was given was greater than or equal to zero. And so here we can do the calculation safely. We will set up a double precision floating point uh, variable called area, and we will uh, define it uh, or create it or, or, or set it using the two, using the radius value that was provided by the user. We'll multiply it by itself, so radius squared, multiplied by the constant that was defined over here, final double pi. And we're going to um, multiply it by it, so it's pi multiplied by r squared, basically, is what area is, okay, like that. And we will print out to the screen with a print line, area is, and that's a string right here, and we're going to concatenate the calculation from area, the, the, the value of the area variable, all right? So what we have here is the else terminating here, we have the main uh, method terminating there, and we have the public class compute area terminating there. All right, so error handling of input radius. 
The same problem can be solved by checking the condition of valid inputs first. Let's take a look at that, what that means. So the same initial business is here. That hasn't changed. Now, what we've got here is system out print line enter a radius value scanner input so this is my input object is a uh, is, is initialized as per one of these uh, uh, objects inside of a scanner library then we're going to say uh, double a uh, radius input sorry double radius so this is a double po floating point number radius we've got our pi constant there we're going to um, test to see if all of the values of radius are greater than or equal to zero. So this is different than before. Before we started off with the if statement, testing to see if it was negative, if everything was less than zero. In this case, we're going to test to see if it's greater than or equal to zero. So it's a different approach. And, uh, and if that's the case, then we're going to do the calculation immediately. Otherwise, we send out an error. So in the first example, this is example number two, in the first example, we uh, checked for the error first and gave out a message on uh, by default, basically, if the, if the, the, not by default, but if the if statement was considered true, then it would create an error message. In this case, if the error, if the if statement is considered true, it will do the actual calculation and the, uh, uh, and the printout. And only if it wasn't correct will it print out a, uh, a negative value, an error message. All right, so here's the next set of questions. Do these two programs behave the same at runtime? Okay, so this is the first one. This is really a sub program, a, a code block. Okay, so if i is greater than or equal to 3, print this out. Else if, so otherwise if, i is less than or equal to 8, print this out right here. Versus, if i is greater than or equal to 3, print that out. If i is less than or equal to 8, print that out. The difference being this else right here. Okay, now check this one out. So do these two programs run the same, behave the same at runtime? So if i is less than or equal to 3, so we're, we're doing something a little di bit different right there. Okay, that was greater than or equal, uh, greater than or equal to three. Here we're doing less than or equal to three, and then instead of uh, i is less than or equal to eight, we're looking at i is greater than or equal to eight. All right. So another way of visualizing this is in this case what we've got is um, look at a number line right here. That's three, and that's eight. We're interested in this case for these numbers all down to infinity and then over here drawing it's really important it really helps figure help you i think figure out what's going on there's three and eight we want greater than equal to three and less than or equal to eight so we want the section of numbers that's in there right there okay uh and then is it different so this is case a that's case b case a and case b the difference again here is this else all right so let's take a look so in the in the first case i is equal to, we're going to set i is equal to five if i is greater than or equal to three print that out if i is less than or equal to eight print that out the answer in this case is going to be the printout this printout right here all right now the other version so that was the a version let's check the, the b version okay this is b and that's a so we're going to take a look for the same i value where in the a case we had an else here in the b case there's no else you actually get two outputs it behaves it behaves differently at runtime okay so simply putting this else in here creates a different runtime behavior different at execution time different when it's running your program behavior um, and so, so this is an indication that the else component can actually be really important. All right. So the two versions behave differently because the two conditions, I is greater than or equal to three and I is less than or equal to eight may be satisfied simultaneously. Remember, we're looking at the number bar right here. That's three, that's eight, that's plus infinity, that's negative infinity. 
you can be both greater than 3 and less than 8 at the same time. There are numbers in here that satisfy both conditions. All right, let's look at the other version. So this is sort of example number two. This is going to be the A version of the program. And the, the answer, if i is equal to 2, the answer is going to be um, that the first one is going to print out i is less than or equal to 3. In this case, for the A version of the program, there's an else right here. Now let's take a look at the B version. Okay, so this is the B version. That's the A version. And uh, so i is still equal to 2. There is no else. So there was an else here. There is no else right there. The outcome of the first version of the program is this. Let's take a look at what happens in the second outcome. It's the same thing. Why? Because the two versions behave the same because the two conditions, i is less than or equal to 3 and i is greater than 8, cannot be satisfied simultaneously. Remember, if we look at the number bar like this, that's negative infinity, that's plus infinity, that's 3, that's 8. We can have greater than 8 and we can have less than 3. They are mutually exclusive. You can only have one or the other. You can't satisfy both of these conditions at the same time.